Now the first thing to understand is this idea of attribution or how we attribute behavior to individuals or how we attribute behavior or actions to ourselves. So in the simplest sense, an attribution is how we go about explaining behavior. But when we also think about attributions, we have this thing called an attribution bias. Now an attribution bias occurs when the explanation that we give for either our behavior or the behavior of others doesn't really actually reflect reality. So instead we're either overvaluing or undervaluing information to reach that conclusion about why that behavior or decision has been made by that individual or by us. So behavior can be influenced by both individual factors and also external factors and that these individual and external factors often play really interesting parts when we're thinking about attribution bias and how we go about explaining why behaviors have occurred. So when we're thinking about internal factors, we're talking about something about that person. So their personality or their character. Then when we're thinking about external factors, we're talking about environmental or situational factors that have led or caused that behavior to occur. And one of the best examples of this is the idea of being cut off by someone when we're driving. So straight away, we could have the thought that they cut me off because they are a dangerous driver. So we attribute it to being something about the individual, about that specific person. Or alternatively, we can have the idea that, you know, they cut me off because this road is simply unsafe. And that's an example of those external factors coming into play in that second explanation. Now, there's different ways in which attribution bias can really be quite troubling. And there's four types of attribution bias that are really important to make sure that we cover and understand clearly. So the first is this idea of a fundamental attribution error. And this occurs when we tend to explain an individual's behavior simply based on internal factors. So they acted that way because of who they are. It's something about them, it's something about their personality or their character that caused them to act that way. So we might have the example that the child stole the candy bar because they're clearly a delinquent. Then we have another type of attribution error, which is called the ultimate attribution bias. So this is a case of comparing the in-group, so my group, compared to the out-group, which is your group. So it involves making a judgment about a person because they belong to a different group. And we attribute the behavior of that person to occurring due to them belonging to that group. So the way they act is reflective of those attributes and characteristics of that group. So again, we focus on giving the explanation an internal reason for why it occurred. It's because of that group membership. So commonly bad behaviors are seen to be reflective of that group or that out group. And positive behaviors are really viewed as being a mere exception or in many aspects an outlier. So it's not representative of that group. It's just this odd case that it occurred. So another type of attribution bias is the actor-observer bias. And this occurs when we attribute someone else's behavior to being reflective of their character, yet when it comes to ourselves, we believe that we acted in a certain way because of external or situational factors. So in essence, we observe and make judgments about others, but when we act in a certain way, we really fail to observe ourselves. So instead, when we're judging ourselves, we believe that we acted in that way because of the situational factors, rather than being able to step back and take another perspective to see actually how that might have looked and it wasn't actually due to situational factors. So the actor observer bias really reflects our tendency to be able to focus on others and attribute things to them and it being about their character, but not being able to apply the same things to ourselves. And then lastly, we have the hostile attribution bias. And this is the tendency to perceive the behavior of others as hostile, aggressive, or even threatening. So ultimately, we attribute the behavior or the intent of that behavior as being intended to cause harm. And the common issue is that we interpret that that intent to cause harm or that intent to be aggressive is directed at us. So an example might be that a colleague picks up your pen during the meeting and then after the meeting leaves and exits the meeting 
holding your pen still. So instead of believing that this might have been a mistake or an error, an example of a hostile attribution bias would be thinking that the person did it deliberately, they were targeting you and they were trying to send a message, for example, that they won't be pushed around and they can take what they want. So it's really an example of that distorted thinking and taking motives or intent out of context and thinking that it's actually something much more hostile than it is. So we see from looking at attribution bias that there's a number of ways that our thinking can really go askew and also there's quite some flaws in our decision making. So really we have our own inherent biases that influence our decision making and our judgment of others.